the remote high country which inspired the film The Man from Snowy River has taken on a sinister aspect over recent years. The disappearances of experienced and well-equipped hunters, trekkers, campers and even day-trippers have local police in a quandary. As a mounting number of individuals are absorbed without a trace into this wilderness in the Victorian high country in northeast Victoria, Australia. Occasionally, when they can find him, they question an elusive and reclusive bush dweller known by locals as Button Man. Although based on his own remote campsite, he is rumoured to slip unseen through the wilderness while observing and sometimes following, perhaps unwelcome, visitors to the area. He has set up campsite on a secluded mountainside which strategically enables him to observe anyone approaching the area and has earned him the moniker of Button Man through his flair for fashioning buttons and ear studs from deer antlers. These he has collected through his hunting expeditions, sometimes lasting weeks, in which he uses only home-crafted spears. While police state categorically that they do not hold Button responsible for any of the disappearances, some reports of his perceived omnipresence are chilling. In one case, a nature photographer camped for a few days in the area to snap photographs of wildlife and scenery. On returning home and downloading his images, there was one unexplained photo of himself asleep in his tent. No one knew he had snapped the shot. Other incidents include experienced bush visitors having their hidden stashes of firewood stolen and claiming that someone must have been watching them to know their location. In another creepy encounter, a night hunter who was camping in the area awoke at 11pm in order to set out in the dark only to find the Button Man had silently set up his own tent next to his. Button Man is said to enjoy his own sport of Hunt the Hunters, which he sees as a harmless exercise to display his skills in clandestine operations. A common theme of these unnerving accounts is that no one ever knows Button Man is near unless he decides to make his presence felt. No one knows the identity of Button Man, who is only occasionally spotted purchasing supplies in a local town or wandering on the outskirts of bushland. The campers and hunters who have had a brief encounters with him say that the darkly clad man emerges after nightfall around their campsite in a manner that has been described as spooky and frightening, and that while he is never threatening, he can be unpleasantly questioning as to why they are there. In one relatively friendly encounter, he was said to have invited campers to come and inspect his axe collection. Experienced bushies who have met him say that the apparent 70-something traverses through terrain with the skill and stamina of someone half his age and answers questions about himself with a chilling thousand miles stare. Here are some of the mysterious disappearances that have occurred in the rugged high country. Conrad Whitlock no one knows why the 72-year-old man was driving around the high country in the middle of the night in July 2019. He appears to have stopped for a toilet break in the darkness, seeming to have intended to only briefly exit his white BMW, where he left his jacket, phone and keys. His wife Mandy says that her husband had been due for an MRI because of recent headaches. However, there was no evidence of either a medical episode or intent to take his own life. In fact, nothing. Police were temporarily buoyed by at least four reports of a man matching Whitlock's description walking along a road at Sawmill Settlement, but commented that the timing meant that he would have needed help getting there. One witness reported that the man stumbled onto the road, forcing a bus in the wrong lane. There have been no promising sightings since. Russell Hill and Carol Clay Hill and Clay, both in their 70s, were friends who shared a passion for camping, although it was later revealed that Hill's wife had no idea he was travelling with another woman. On March the 20th, 2020, the pair disappeared from their campsite on Dry River Trek, Winningada, which had been well set up with a large tent, outdoor shower and table and chairs. As a former bush logger, Hill was well acquainted with the area and bush savvy. Friends say that Hill always looked after his gear, 
and that it was out of character to abandon his well-equipped white Toyota Land Cruiser. Even more disturbingly, the campsite and camper utility were found to have been burned and Hill's drone had gone missing. An expensive new drone that he'd been flying the week before near Button's man's abode. Police said it appeared that the pair had intended to return to the campsite as Clay's belongings were still in the car and food had been left there. Neither Hill nor Clay had accessed their phone or bank accounts since their disappearance and police believed them to be deceased despite a complete lack of clues or evidence. They are also investigating possible third party involvement. Forensic examination by arson chemists of the burnt out campsite was inconclusive and at the last police search and recent sweep of the area the trail had run cold. The terrain becomes frozen over in winter, precluding any further investigations for now. Nils Becker, the 39-year-old seasoned bushwalker, had prepared for months for his five-day solo hike in the Alpine National Park. Described as strong, fit and resilient, he had passed through the Upper Jamison Hut on October the 24th, 2019, and two days later, he texted his family from the Vallejo Gutner hut that he would soon be reaching his car at Mount Sterling. He was not to be seen again. Button Man was interviewed by police during their inquiries and reported that he had witnessed the well-equipped hiker passing through his camp, which is at a location called the Crossroads, high in the Alpine National Park. The spot is well known by experienced trekkers for its uniquely reliable radio reception. While the final conclusion of the police was that Becker probably succumbed to hypothermia, extensive searching over days by a team of 70 people, dogs and air support, failed to find any trace of him. David Prito 50-year-old Prito had been the governor of Barwon Prison when a high-profile gangster called Carl Williams was slain within the prison walls. Prito was a keen bush hunter who had set out with his brother-in-law from the Tomahawk hut at Mount Sterling in 2011. When he went missing in the high country, rumours abounded of revenge crime by hired hitman. However, crime writer John Sylvester dismissed these theories with the view that only a skilled bushman could ambush an experienced hunter. Several extensive searches of the area where Prito disappeared, conducted over months, found no trace of the men or any of his belongings, and he has also not accessed bank accounts since vanishing. Warren Mayer In March 2008, in the same extended forested region, another day hitchhiker went missing without a trace. 57-year-old Mayer was an experienced and well-equipped trekker who had hiked the Inca Trail and Kokoda Trek in Papua New Guinea. He had parked his car in the Dom Dom Saddle car park but was never to return, as he had planned to do within only four hours expecting to meet friends for lunch. Despite the fine weather and the supplies of food, water, phone and GPS, Mayer did not reach the end of his walking trail and his family were later to feel let down by what they saw as bungled police and coronal inquiries. They felt that the semi-automatic gunfire heard by landowners in the area that morning was played down in the inquest findings and that the large concealed illegal marijuana plantation discovered by searchers suggested foul play. Despite Meyer's complete disappearance from an easily navigated walking path, involvement by another person was dismissed as a possibility by authorities. The most mysterious aspect of all these unexplained disappearances is that none of the well-equipped outdoor travellers used their phones or activated their GPS. Rumours and speculation have mounted amongst locals and visitors to the surrounding areas, making their way to the ears of the missing person squad. Search and rescue police finally hiked to the summit in the Alpine National Park where Button Man's dwelling had a panoramic view of the area. They were not necessarily there to make any accusations, apart from illegal camping, but to request his help with the disappearances, given his knowledge of the area, panoramic visual outlook, and reputation for silently observing hikers as they unknowingly pass them in the landscape. The uniquely resourceful and eccentric man was apparently chatty and cooperative.